So as it turns out, in the previous video, I actually completely botched the explanation behind the analog emulation for the direction pad. And somebody was nice enough to actually go over it with me and explain exactly how it works. So I wanted to make a follow-up video uh, to kind of clarify exactly how it works. And I'll annotate the previous video to lead to this video so that people can get um, good information about how this works. I don't mind being wrong, but I do mind people getting wrong information from me, especially if there's better information available. I would prefer people know exactly how this device is used, because ultimately my goal is to help you create uh, a more comfortable gaming experience with this tool, and you, you can only do that if you get accurate information about how it works. So let's just get straight into it. So the way I thought it worked was, instead of having four slices to a pie or eight slices to a pie like a normal direction pad, I thought that it just chopped it up into a much larger gradient, which is kind of true, but my explanation for it was completely wrong. Uh, I thought it was something closer to like a 32 or maybe 64 slice gradient, which very possibly might still be true, but the way it behaves is what I was wrong about. Now, the best way to kind of illustrate this would be to go to Google and look up something like a uh, an eight-point compass rose, like this. So you have up and left, and then you have the input in between that holds down both at the same time in order to go uh, northwest, right? Now, if you think about this in the context of the keyboard, that'd be W and A, so you might hold down W and A at the same time, or if you're thinking of it in terms of intervals, you might be spamming them both in equal intervals and you'll eventually get northwest, right? Now, what the analog emulation allows you to do is it adds way more points to this gradient. I'm not sure how many extra points, it could be upwards of 32 or 64 or greater, but you could think of it like this for the sake of clarity, for the sake of this video. You could think of it like a 16-point compass rose, where all of a sudden you have these options that aren't normally possible on a direction pad with only four inputs. This allows 16 inputs, uh, just for the sake of the explanation. So you know how to go northwest, you know, in terms of intervals, but what if you want to go north-northwest? Well, you'd have to do something a little bit fancier with your fingers for every one left you're doing, you're doing two ups to go north-northwest. So that would be something closer to, you know, I'm hitting W twice per every one A. And that's what the software does. Depending on where you are in this gradient, it will hit one input with a greater number of intervals than another input. And depending on where your finger is, it will do this in a particular way. Maybe if you're really close to the top, it'll hit uh, it'll hit up maybe five times per every left in order to go maybe slightly off in the left direction. And the, the, the gradient, I think, is very extreme. It would have to be in order to emulate an analog stick. But I hope this was a clearer way to explain it. So let's go back into the software here and go to the advanced settings and you go down to analog emulation pulse time. You could think of this almost like the direction pads or the analog emulations input smoothing. So you move according to intervals, correct? You could think of the intervals as you're holding down W for a period of time if you're trying to go northwest. You're holding down W for a period of time and then you're holding down A for a period of time, holding down W for a period of time and so on. What changing the intervals does, if you set this higher, it'll change the rate at which these two keys are alternating. And that can help smooth out the movement. So instead of being up, left, up, left, it might end up being more of a spammy action and that could help to actually smooth out the movement in that particular direction. And Somebody had made the suggestion that this is probably pretty good for like top-down games, like 2D top-down games where you have, you know, only four inputs on the direction pad, but you can kind of emulate an analog stick in that context. So that's where this would be useful. If you wanted to think of this like music, 
I would be holding down up for a half note and then left for a half note, up for a half note, left for a half note per bar. But if I change the pulse time and increase the interval, this might be an eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, or half note, half note, half note, half note, depending on where you put it. It might even be like 16th notes where it'd be spamming it or it'd be like 32nd notes where it's spamming it even harder. Uh, that, that would be another way that you could think of how this adjusts the, uh, the input and how it behaves. The analog emulation active percentage is basically how much of the interval is occupied by uh, an actual keystroke. So if you want the entire interval occupied by a keystroke, you'd floor this to the right side, right? That would be the difference between up, left, up, left, and just tapping. If you had this floored to the left side, I believe you'd pretty much just be tapping the keys. And if you had this completely bottomed out to the other side, you'd be holding down the key for a majority of the duration of the interval. And I hope that's a better way to explain exactly how this works. This is probably one of the most confusing options, and hopefully that actually clarifies it a little bit.